Forever Show, I am talking to Dame Edna Everidge about her exciting international jet set life and the people she meets and come on her show. You were telling us about the affair between Julia Roberts and Boris Yeltsin, and I well, found that fascinating. Well, it is fascinating, but unfortunately it's not strictly true. Oh. No, it was little uh, Leona Helmsley that he was having an affair with, I'm afraid. <laughs> and it's not true that she's a bad tipper. It's not true. <laughs> Oh, Joan, it's lovely to talk to you. You've had everybody on well, your show. Well, Jodie Foster, I adore her. Jody and Foster. I bring out the hidden qualities of people. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know Jodie Foster. And Faye Dunaway's humility. Oh. I managed to... I managed to coax I, that to the surface, too. I, I never too. met Faye Dunaway either, I'm oh, sorry to say. Oh, wonderful people. I just, I just you know adore everybody. them. I do. The Queen is a very good friend of mine. I know the Queen. It's a wonder she hasn't mentioned it to me, Joan. <laughs> We have the same birthday, oh, she and I. How spooky! Yes. <laughs> but Joan, that's tomorrow. You're, tomorrow? The Queen's birthday is tomorrow. Would you, I've got to go. We spend it together. Would, would you do me a favour, Edna? Would you take over my show so I can go to England and be there oh, with the Queen? This is a dream come true. <laughs> oh, of course. You. Thank you. Give her my love. This is the Dave Edna Show. I've just been talking to, um, oh goodness, what's that woman's name? Uh, my next guest is Johnny Carson. Taxi! 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 Kennedy Airport, wait for me! Kennedy Airport, please. Can we stop for a passport picture? And you know if they retouch? Just hurry up. Can you have to go? Go! Liz! Hi, homegirl! I'm calling from the plane. Guess who's 462 in dog years? You! See you today and wear your good crown! C Harrods, can you get a few Harrods? She loves ugly pocketbooks. I can just find one she doesn't have already. I know. I'll get her something nice and classy. Nothing cheap and flashy. She's already got Fergie. Boy, you talk about luck. A plastic crowd with beer straws. She's gonna love it. Go on. More great gifts. I mean, Cuban cigars. And a push of bra. This is my day. Oh, it's Big Ben. Gee, I didn't know he made clocks as well as rice. There's a sex shop somewhere around here that my mother found on her honeymoon. There it is. Yay! Okay! Hello. Now listen, I think I'll take that, that big pink one. The one that says batteries not needed. Turbo power. Could you show me how it works? Oh, thank you. Yes, of course I'll be back when I meet somebody. This is it! The Queen's bed! Come on, Lizzie! Are we gonna have a good time? Where are we going? I can't see anything. Careful, I'm very new shoes. Come on, let's make a turn. Here we go, come on. Are you sure? Shh! Oh, here we go! Okay. Your hat, your hat, your hat, your hat. Oh, 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 oh. Rude boy. In other times, he wouldn't have a head. Your Royal Highnesses, ladies and gentlemen, the management of the Queen's Theatre requests that there is no smoking or picture taking during tonight's performance. Listen, you want to smoke, you smoke. You want to take pictures, you take pictures. What the hell? You paid. Screw <laughs>
Now, ladies and gentlemen, the best comedy performer in her price range, Miss Joan Rivers. <laughs> to be in London and it's very exciting especially because we have mutual birthday and that's very exciting because it's my birthday my birthday is actually tomorrow and your birthday is today but we celebrate on the same day and this is a wonderful orchestra this is Ian McPherson and the McPherson Ants and we should applaud them right now because they're a fabulous group of orchestra. So they just played when I came on, they played Anchors Away. Did you all hear that? And they played it, here was the excitement, they played it without any sheet music. <laughs> oh, look at this reaction, yeah, well, okay. And it's just, it was very hard to do to play without sheet music. I could not play without sheet music. Could you play without sheet music? No. Could you play without sheet music? No. You're the one I'm after. <laughs> Could you play without sheet music? No, thank God. Because I had a woman yesterday in Gloucester who was going, I can play, dr drunk out of her mind. I can play without, I can play without. Finally she put her fingers on the stage and went, no you can't, no you can't. <laughs> they just play without sheet music, that is very tough to do. How many people in this orchestra? 14. 14, take your while. How many musicians? How many musicians? Three. The point is, 14 musicians just played for you in the great London tradition. 14 people, black and white, rich and poor, Jew and Gentile, lesbian and fairy. Have all, yes, yes, London, lesbian, lesbian! <laughs> stage in this officer there is a raging bull dyke can you take that <laughs> i am talking leather and chains i am talking broken bottles against a bar i am talking someone who would scale the hell out of jaja gabor i have to, did, you, did you have that over here when she was crying i don't want to go to prison they're lesbians in prison she is so stupid there are no lesbians in prison they're all in pro tennis everybody knows <laughs> Martina Navratilova on my show, very feminine. Hello, John. It was a... <laughs> she was tough. She used a brick for a tampon. She was... <laughs> the woman douched in Gatorade. I was in shock. In shock. <laughs> she had a vibrator on a kickstand. I have never... I was like, tough. In this orchestra, there is a lesbian. Now, who is that lesbian? What's your name? What's your name? Karen. Pick the dyke. Come on, Karen, on the stage, come on. Come on, Karen. You didn't sit in the front for nothing. Come on, bitch, on the stage. Come on. Here you go, okay. Now, you know what a lesbian is. Oh, you look very nice, Karen, all right. You know what a lesbian is? It's a woman who likes other women. All right. You have nice hair. <laughs> Come on, oh, Karen. Don't be so worried, Karen. <laughs> Karen. <laughs> Are you Jewish? Oh! <laughs> Lesbian. Come on, Karen. You can do it. I'm not, they forgive you. Pick the lesbian, Karen. Who's the butchest one? Who's the butchest one? Have your choice, Karen. That one in the glasses. Oh, very good choice. Give me a hand, Karen. This is tough now. Is Karen right? Is this the lesbian our orchestra? It's up to you. Will the real lesbian stand? Could you go? Karen! I'm 
I'm going to give you some flowers for having the guts to come on the stage tonight. Karen, in this section, pick your color. Is Karen Polish? We'll soon know. Pick your color, Karen. White. Damn it, Karen, you're right with it. Good for you. Here, oh, look. You get a hat. <laughs> Okay. Do you live in London? No. No, where do you live? Essex. Essex. Oh, that's expensive. Is that good? <laughs> good or bad? Would we want to live in Essex? <laughs> then you can have it without the pot, Karen. All right. <laughs> Is Essex really shitty? Tell me about it. Just... <laughs> You're Jewish and you live in Essex, then? Let me see your ring, I'll decide if you're Jewish. Let me see, let me see your ring. Where's the stone? Karen, you're not Jewish. You're, you're, did you have to get married? Why that terrible? Are you, were you desperate to get married? I mean, that's a terrible ring. I don't want to hurt your feelings. That's like, no, no, like, oh, like you don't know certain people don't get good rings. Certain religions get good rings, certain religions get lousy rings. Episcopalians get incredible rings. Uh, Methodists get very good rings. Jews get great rings. Uh, Baptists get shitty rings. It's not their fault. The guy gives her the ring when the hand is underwater. She goes, ooh, terrific. Then it comes up. <laughs> but Italians get the best rings of all because they take them right off of dead people. It is, uh, oh, sure. The beautiful ring. It'll be yours tomorrow, baby cakes. But. Jews get big rings, but second wives get the biggest rings. That's why every woman, show me your hands, I'll show you who's the first wife or the second wife. Are you second? You're a second wife? <laughs> I'm beyond depressed. You're a second, you must be lousy in bed. You must be just... I bet your pelvis has never moved once if that's what you end up with. <laughs> no, because second wife, where is the first wife? On, on welfare? I mean, get, get... No, let me just say this. See, second one, did you marry for love both times? Then you're stupid. Now, let me tell you something. Any woman that marries, the first time you marry for love, stupid, okay, but you learn. The second time if you're married for love, you are stupid, stupid, stupid. No woman marries for love. You marry for money, money, money. Look what you got, a couple of orgasms and a shitty ring. Is that the way you want to end up in life? Was it worth it going, ooh, 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 ooh? How long you married? Too long, too long. How long? What do you call too long? Three months? Four months? <laughs> no, any woman, because well, most of you are single here, yeah, because you're, you're married. You, yeah, she's single, yeah, you can tell you're single, the way you sit, yeah, no, the way you sit. No, 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 no. I can go around the room. You're married. Am I right? You're married. You're married. You were never married? Never married? How old are you? Who is this you're with? Take your time. Who is this you're with? Your boyfriend? Are you sleeping with him? The truth, you can tell me. Wait, did you get jewelry? So why do you sleep with him? Are you... Let me tell you something. Any woman that gets into bed, unless you get jewelry, you are a fool, a fool, a fool. Any woman that sleeps around without a piece of jewelry or a slut and a tramp, you get a piece of jewelry, God bless you. I am just... Listen to me. woman that gets into bed without jewelry, you are stupid. You get a ring, you get a pin, you get something. Why? Why have you done this? When, he, when you break up, you're going to end up with nothing. And when you do break up, God forbid, you keep the jewelry, you swallow the stone, you give nothing back. No, no man will look through shit for a diamond. Be believe me. Am I right, Liz? It, it's just... Everybody knows this, because second wives are much smarter than first wives. That's why every woman in this room, if you are single, you marry for money, 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 money. Second wives, first wives are always going, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the lousy ring, thank you for the cloth coat. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Second wives, what the hell is this? You give this to your mother, let her wear a swimming face down. That's why every woman think like a second wife, grab and take, grab and take, grab and take. And when you die, whatever you got out of him, you are buried on you. If the next bitch wants it, make her dig for it. Oh, absolutely. Make her dig. Make her dig. So you're married twice? What happened to the first one? Oh, you are the first wife. Do you have it for a coat? 
<laughs> get a fur coat. I was walking down the street, somebody gave me a card, you know, like, uh, you shouldn't wear a fur coat. I, it was a natural death. I walked behind a, no, I walked behind a mink with a heart condition. I went, boo, it killed over. I went, oh, leave me alone. <laughs> somebody threw red paint on my dog. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Every woman, get what you can, and how do you get by looking good, good, good? That's how you get the rings, that's how you get the jewelry, that's how you get the fur coats. You look good, look good, look good. You don't cook and you don't clean. Any woman, oh please, any woman that cooks and cleans, you are a fool, a fool, a fool. Not one woman here was ever made love to because she did the linoleum, am I right? The floor is immaculate, lie down, you hot bitch. It never happens. My house is filthy. Once a year, I want a clean house, I call the cops, they go, I've been robbed. They come over, they dust the fingerprints. Use your hands! I don't even clean my attic. I clean my attic. I found Aunt Frank. Who wants to see her? I was like... Can I come out? Oh, shut up. It is... I don't even buy household products. The first time I saw a blue water on the toilet, I figured a Smurf is peed. I don't want to know! You gotta look good, look... You gotta exercise. You know what? We should let the orchestra exercise and all that. Everybody up, come on, we're gonna do a little exercising. This is a wonderful orchestra. Everybody up, come on, talk about exercising. Because I've been sitting all afternoon, we've been rehearsing. We are gonna do jumping jacks, okay? Yes, okay, yeah. So we said, okay, I'm nice. And we're gonna do 13 jumping jacks in honor of the age of Cher's newest boyfriend. I like that. Oh, is she here? Look for a woman nursing her day. She is, that's a... She likes them young. She cruises Toys R Us. She, oh, yeah. She and I went to the movies, right? And I had a date, and she was with a fetus. It was very strange, like a joy. <laughs> she bought him the, the joy of sex. He was coloring it in. Ooh. I'm... Anyhow, here we go. We're going to do jumpy jacks. Are you ready? The orchestra like that. Are you ready? We're going to do 13 jumpy jacks. One, two, three. And one, two, three, four. <laughs> Thank you all very much. I will see you later. Okay. We shall call this off today. I want to go off today. I can bring this curtain down or whatever we have. And, so, and I'm out of breath from 13 jumpy jacks because, again, I'm Jewish. If God wanted me to bend over, he would put diamonds on the floor. And it, it's oh. hard. <laughs> and I should exercise. Do you exercise? Yeah, what do you do? Uh, Jane Fonda. You did Jane Fonda? I bought the Jane Fonda tape. I use it as, as a bed tray. And it's just... <laughs> that bitch, she's got a good body, right? We share the same... Actually, we share the same backyard. I come out in the morning, I'm all lousy, and there she is. Good morning, good morning. I'm pick a finger. It's just... Because <laughs> I, I got into a thigh machine, but I stayed in an hour too long, and my knees fused together. And it's just... <laughs> Oh, God. No, you should. You know what I do? I diet. There are three great diets now in California. The first is the Vanna White diet. Only eat what you can spell. Very good. You, oh, you're dead to me. Second is the Catherine Hepburn diet. Put as much food as you want to on your fork. Whatever gets up to your mouth is yours. <laughs> oh, excuse me! Excuse me! I am very angry at Catherine Hepburn because she never told us she had the shake. Am I lying to you? She never, she made us think it was awful. I threw out two perfectly good TV sets. I thought they were shaking. I had no idea. You want to see Catherine Hepburn during an earthquake? <laughs> the third diet is just go to Mexico and drink a glass of water. I was in Tijuana last month. I farted so much. I had wind burns in my ass. I mean, you have no idea. How many times can you turn around in one car ride and go, excuse me, excuse me. It was like Exorcist 3, excuse me. And the woman in the back seat's going, that's all right, that's all right. Meanwhile, she's trying to break the window of the car with the heel of her shoe. All the cars are driving past, they're all looking in going, ooh, because yeah, her face is hanging out the window. They're going, ugly dog, oh, that's... Don't, don't, can we talk for a second now? Don't, don't you hate for us? You, don't, you, is there anyone here? There's certain universals. Everyone hates for you know? Except when you're in a tub alone. Then it's glorious. Now, oh! You can make bubbles to tombs. That's hot. 
noisy surprise board. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> when you're in the middle of a conversation and somebody farts and you go, who did that? Me! Ah! <laughs> See, I don't mind a fart that's noisy if you know it's coming. Because, no! <laughs> no. Because then you can cover it with sound. Did I ever show you how I tap dance, tap dance, tap dance, tap dance, tap dance? <laughs> you know it's great? <laughs> Silent farts. Is that a gift from God? Is that, is that... Is that God saying, eat beans, have a good time? I mean, <laughs> if you make a silent fart, you're in a lobby. Just walk fast, make a breeze behind you. No one knows. <laughs> and if you're in an elevator, just blame the person next to you, pig. <laughs> elevator, you know, not a fart box. <laughs> the only time a silent fart will give you away is if you're wearing pantyhose, because then the ankles blow up. The <laughs> They call them knickers here, right? Knickers? Or, and they, yeah, knickers. You wear knickers? Knickers, yeah. We go up here. Don't you hate them? Are they, are they terrible sizes here? And no, no matter what size up on the stage, the crotch is always right down here. It's like, it's like you have to jump on a horse to make it fit. A friend of mine was pregnant. Nine days she had the baby, didn't know it, fell into the pantyhose. Had no idea! She was walking around going, I hear crying, I hear crying. Kid is going, mommy, mommy, mommy. <laughs> you know what I hate? When you get a run on a pantyhose, you know what I'm talking about? And you, because how much they charge? How much they can pay for here? What did it cost you? But to buy yeah. them? No. When you buy pantyhose and knickers, what does what's, what's the pair cost? Five pounds. Five pounds, that's $10. That's a lot. You know, well, the same thing in the States. Ten dollars, $12. Donna Karen, $12. So, no, so when I get a run, I'm not going to give it up. Do you know what I'm saying? Screw it. No, I always pretend it just happened. Don't you do that? <gasps> Look at that! <laughs> Look at that! It just happened! Goes up one leg across the twat down the other side of it. Or sometimes you pull them on, and you pull them on from here, and it runs down there, and you take your nail polish, like, and you get the little run, and you fix it, and you go to work, and you come back, you take it off. Ah! <laughs> oh, God. Because you have to make them look, you have your legs, have, women have legs, women have to look nice in general, the legs have to look good, you have to paint, you have your toes, you have to shave, shave. What do you do, you shave, you wax, what do you do? Wax? Yeah, yeah. Do you use that lady here, they have that lady? Do you know what I'm talking about? Ever lady, ever lady, for those of you who want to know what happened to Hitler, he is alive and well. <laughs> There was a little machine out called Epilady. And my manager gave it to me for Christmas. It rips the hair out of your legs. And when you come to and the nurse lets you touch your leg, it's very, very soft. And now they're making Epilady for pubic hair for the summer. It's called Pubilady. And uh, And all over those beaches of summer, women are gonna be walking around like that. And they'll say, do you lose a contact lens? No, epilady, epilady. <laughs> you know what I use? I use Nair. Do you have Nair here? It's like a depilatory. You put it up like one leg, right? And I'm single now. I'm a widow. So I live alone, so I make like a happy face in my pubic hair. <laughs> <laughs> then I turn to the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> the dogs go, she's crazy. She's crazy. <laughs> I had three, I had three dogs. I had one tiny, tiny little dog named Spike, who I couldn't take because I want dogs to come over here. And then I have two big dogs. One's a Collie and one's a Great Dane German Shepherd. And in, this, in New York City where I live, they have what they call the Pooper Scoop Law. Do you have that here? We have to clean up after your dog. What do they have? Hundred dollar fine if you don't pick up after your dog or a day in jail, depending on the judge. Okay, so the little dog is like a little tootsie roll. Big deal. You take a little Kleenex, you pick it up. But the other two are like big dogs. <laughs> So I figure, the first time a cop stops me, I'll pretend I did it, because there's no law against that. <laughs> so they say, Just get out of the way, Callie. Hello, officer. <laughs> Lovely day, don't you think? Because <laughs> I love animals. My, do my daughter's all grown up. That's your daughter? Yeah, so how old is she? 21. 21, yeah, mine's 22. Now, doesn't go fast. Any others? Any other little kitties? Two others, how old? Um, 17. 17? And nine. 17 and nine, yeah. Boy, it's nice, it's nice when they're small. I like them when they're big, but when they're small, yeah. Do you have, do you have pets and stuff? 
No, oh, when we were small, when Melissa was small, my daughter, we had, we had dogs, we had cats, we had, because we lived in the country, we had um, three, three horses, we, we had, oh, God, we had uh, chickens, rabbits, uh, hams, when, when a pet dies, can we talk? When a pet dies, and you have to tell your daughter, a hamster died, Melissa was maybe eight years old, I have to tell her. She's coming home from school, I gotta tell her. Missy. I don't know how to tell you this. <laughs> Mr. Chucky died this morning. I drowned the motherfucker. That is... <laughs> Nobody shits on my white rugs, okay? <laughs> you gotta give him credit. He fought like a son of a bitch. I will never forget those little wet paws holding onto that toilet seat. Please! Do you know hamsters can tread water for two and a half hours? Do you know? Now, I would never hurt anything. That's why I can never live in the Philippines. I'm just, that's, oh, they, they eat dog in the Philippines. Oh, look at this group. Imelda Marcos is my neighbor. Is she here? Look for a woman with tall hair. Her husband's still in it. And it's just, they eat dogs. It's a specialty in the Philippines. Do you know what it's like to have a Filipino for a neighbor? Every time I come home, I find my little dog covered in shake and bake. Do you know what that's like? What happens, Spike? And she goes, I don't eat dog. And there was a leash hanging out of her mouth. They eat dog. <laughs> Have you ever heard Amelda Marco sing? <gasps> um, she sings, I cannot tell you, because our back windows are near each other. <laughs> you wish for Yoko Ono. I never thought I would say that. That's... Have you ever heard her sing? <gasps> I think when Satan plays his records backward, he hears Yoko Ono. I mean... <laughs> I think John Lennon heard us sing and committed suicide. I, he went, Yoko, oh no. It, it's <laughs> but she, there's a wife that did well. There's a second wife. Talking about second wives, Yoko Ono was his second wife. She did damn good, a lot better than you did. And why did she do good? Because she married for money, 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 and fake to orgasm. Do you fake? <laughs> we can talk. Do you fake orgasm? <laughs> Every once in a while, you go, ooh, 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 ooh. Your daughter's not looking. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. Do you fake? How many women in this room fake orgasm? I'm just curious. Show of hands. Isn't it great? Isn't it great? You know how lucky women are? Oh, look at this group. Every woman, you must learn to fake orgasm. It is common courtesy. <laughs> He's doing most of the work. You gotta encourage him. Ooh, 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 ooh. You're the best, you're the best. <laughs> more, more, more. <laughs> Cause that's why God gave women sex so we can shop the next day. I am telling you, that's what sex is all about so you can get the monies you can shop in the Bible and Bathsheba went forth and charged. Read the Bible. <laughs> Read the Bible, that's why every woman, that's why I love television shopping, you have that here, don't you? You can screw and shop at the same time. It's great! You can let your, your toes dial for you. Ooh, 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 ooh. Send it, because that's the fun of life, that women look good, that's why you must look good, you must look good, you must look good. You must not cook, you must not clean. I am a shitty cook, I don't care. I serve ketchup for a vegetable. I could, oh, please! You know who are very good cooks, who pretend to be good cooks and get away with murder? Southern women in the United States. They play kids, and men, see, men love that. Men love, you must remember, men are very stupid, don't take offense. Men love, <laughs> men love to be kids with the women. That's why Southern women are so goddamn smart, because they're always playing, I'd love to cook, I'd love to clean, I just don't know how. It said separate two eggs, I put one on the chair, one on the floor. <laughs> Did I do wrong? <laughs> you wanted soup? Well, the recipe said, take a leak. Here it is. <laughs> and the men go, isn't she great? That's why every woman learned to look good and learned to play the game and learned to be stupid, stupid, stupid. Maybe that's why you're single. Did you go to college? <laughs> because you're either too goddamn smart. Men don't like smart women. Listen to me. Did you go to college? No, stupid over here has got three children. So why don't we learn from this? 
we learn? If you're good looking, that's all you need. No man will ever put his hand up your dress looking for a library card. Listen to me. <laughs> the dumber, the better. They like them stupid, 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 and good looking, good looking, good looking. That's why you must work on yourselves. You must try so hard, and you must look around and marry for bucks. So what is your daughter doing while she's waiting to get married? Do you go to school? Secretary, okay, you can meet people that way. You going out with anybody special? Yeah, you're an, an easy birth or hard birth, your daughter. <laughs> well, tell her hard, don't ever say easy. Because children leave us, children grow up and they leave us. They love us and they leave us. Unless you make them feel guilty, 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 guilty. How do you make a child feel guilty, guilty, guilty? You make it think you went through hell giving birth. <laughs> That's the only way. That's why to this day, my daughter says in her 20s, she comes home from work, I sit on a rubber tube when she walks in the jug. She... <laughs> Hi, sweetheart, don't mind me. I'm just having a vagina cramp with your big head with me to shreds 20 years ago. Actually, it was a very easy birth. I was walking down the street and went, oh, look who's here on a leash. That... The trouble was, I had an intern when I went to the hospital who never told me to cut the cord. The kid was so young, he, ne he didn't know. My daughter was following me all over for four years. <laughs> Stop following me. So three kids, what do you use? Pill, coil, what are you using now? What do you use? Pill, coil, tie tubes? What'd you do, tie tubes? Yeah, I, was, I had a hysterectomy. I was, I was using the pill. How many of you use the pill? I didn't like the pill. Every time I'd stand up, it would drop out. Did not like the pill. The, oh! <laughs> You're walking down the street, the little pill is rolling behind you. Stupid. Then I was coiled for a while, but I was picking up Radio Free Europe. And anyway, oh! I would be at the, at the PTA talking ahead of my kids' school out here. This is the voice of freedom. It was coming from my crotch. That, that. And every time I'd cross my legs, the garage doors would flip over. It was so stupid. So I figured. If I could open garage doors with my crotch, I have got power here, don't you think? I was living in California. I would drive all over Beverly Hills going like that. Garage doors would flip open. All these middle-aged women would come out. I heard a noise. Who's going to rape me? <laughs> Nobody. Because a woman reaches a certain age, the body goes, goes, goes. That's why don't live with a guy, get married. Because a man, when he's 90, this one, he'll be a catch. We have an extra man. Men don't age. We have an extra man. Bring him along. He's 98. Bring him, bring him. He's dead. Bring him. We'll prop him. A woman, you hit, you hit 50, 51, the body goes, my body is dropping. I don't want to talk about it. My boobies. I take off my bra. I can nurse China from my bedroom. I mean, you have no idea. My body is dropping so fast, my gynecologist wears a hard hat. I mean, it, it's just... My body is... Ha I was giving myself a pedicure last night. I went 12 toes. <laughs> and the big one's taking up so much polish. I mean, it just... <laughs> and it's not that... Because men's bodies drop, am I right? Does anyone ever talk about that? Men's bodies drop. No one talks. A man hits 50, the balls hit the ground. You can play golf. No one, no one talks about it. I, I had a very famous movie star on my show, my, my chat show. It was all pulled up. He looked sensational. It was pulled and sniffed and pulled and sniffed. And they'd taken all that extra skin. They made another little man that walked right beside me. It was never lonely. But the penis was like a tie now. It was. So Every time he crossed his legs, his mouth would snap over. I mean, it was just so stupid. That's my first home uh, porno the other night. I never, I, have you seen porno, home porno? I never, I never, I swear, I, tell me the truth. You know, oh yeah, I swear to you. Never, and I was married 22 years, never, never, never did I see a, 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 a home, home porno show. Then, a, it was, well, it was Jewish home porno, home, home porno. So look what they gave me, big deal. 10 minutes, one minute of sex, nine minutes of guilt. It was like, <laughs> what have we done? The couple sat on the edge of the bed. What have we done? What have we done? <laughs> and they were married. It was just, because I don't know a damn thing about sex. You know, I'm from the generation that I knew nothing. My mother never told me a damn thing. I asked my mother, where am I from? She gave me a fake address in Cleveland. I knew nothing. <laughs> All she told me was, man gets on top, woman gets on the bottom. I bought bunk beds. I knew nothing. 
My wedding night, I had never seen a naked man before. I cannot tell you. He said, I'm gonna blow in your ear. I said, use a Kleenex. Anyway, <laughs> he had to give me a demonstration. <laughs> to this day, I cannot look a donut and a Twinkie in the face. <laughs> And neither will you. I knew nothing. Nothing. That's why I think I, I think I'm. You think you're good in bed? Yeah, I think I'm lousy in bed. My husband never said so, but I think so. Once I said to him, "Well, I I, I can't prove it anymore." I, how old are you? Because I don't. Well, I date, but I don't date. Date. You know what I'm saying? I try to at this age dating. They show up in a hearse. It is so. They are so goddamn old, and you have to play the game. What are you doing on Tuesday night? Let me check. The book is so white, I'm snow blind from looking. Oh, Tuesday's not any good. It's my enema night. Uh uh. I mean, it's so old. A guy gave me a hickey. He's left his teeth in my neck. I mean, it's just. I was out on a date the other night, and the guy's looking at me, looking at me. I think, gee, he thinks I'm attractive. He was dead from a stroke. It is. So I'll never, I don't know what I'm like in bed. My husband never, never said I wasn't good, but I, I could tell. Once I said to him, why don't you call out my name while we're making love? He said, I don't want to wake you up. It was just, <laughs> that's why I should have married, not for love, I should have married for money. If so when I had something, the smartest woman to marry for money, Jackie Onassis, is she here? <laughs> Look for a woman with like lizard eyes, they work independently, looking for rich guys. <laughs> there was a smart one, don't, to marry that old pig, you wouldn't have slept with him, would you, with a shitty ring? Did you ever see Onassis? He was this big, he used to walk around, the knuckles would hit the ground. He's like, that's how they got the poopa scoopa law. Oh, shoot. But wasn't she smart to sleep with him? Because a lot of women would not have slept with Onassis because he was disgusting and repulsive and pewy and stinky and farty and shitty and buggies coming out of the nose like rainwater. But, but, when he dropped dead, she got $58 million. $58 the sheet so fast for that? Oh, please. <laughs> 58 million dollars? Just shut your eyes and say store names. Tomorrow, I'll be shopping in Gucci. I'll forget all this. <laughs> I would even move. I would make conversation. <laughs> Because that's what it's all about. To be, it's so hard to be a woman, I'll tell you that. You have to look good, you have to try, you have to good. I look like I have good boobs in this. What do you see? I'll show you. Because this dress was made for me. No, a woman named, I have no boobies. You have good boobs. Now, I have no boobs. Wait till I show you the dress, though. The dress looks great. It looks like I have a lot. Wait, look at that. Doesn't it look great? It's like Madonna meets menopause. Isn't that great? Yeah. It's a push up shove over Bazia. You put it on down here, you push every damn thing you want. My belly button is right here. Can you see that? If I were pregnant now, the kid would come out my mouth. Because you, know, you know what it's like to have no boobs? I'm having the best time in this. Hello, hello, hello. It's my knees. And it's just... You know what it's like to have no boobs? You know what it's like in the summer to put sugar and water on your chest and pray for killer bees? Do you know what I've been through? Do you know what it's like to go to nurse your only child, have a suck on your shoulder by choice? My wedding night, do you know what it's like? I came out of the bathroom, he went into shock. He said, let me help you with the buttons. I said, I am naked. My wedding night, and he wasn't gonna make love with the lights on, I said, shut that car door. There is no way. Because I was, I, I knew nothing. I, I had never gone to the gynecologist, I get, don't you hate to go to the gynecologist? They talk about men being brave. Men don't know what bravery is. You give a man a helmet and a gun, that is not brave. You give a man a bazooka and a tank, that is not brave. I shall tell you what bravery is. <laughs> bravery is every woman in this theater tonight. Bravery is to make a gynecologist appointment and to show up. That is what bravery is all. Yes, yes, we should have brought ourselves. We should have a stamp commemorating us, don't you think? Someone like, uh, someone like Meryl Streep in the stirrups. I've been thinking about this. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? Oh, but, but isn't it the worst? The white dress with the slit, the tape with the paper. They put one foot into one stirrup, the other foot in the other stirrup, and the first word you hear, slide down, slide down. I can't, I'm stuck to the paper. 
it's so important, let him slide up, slide up. I'm paying. That and relax. Relax, relax. I can't get my hand out. Relax. I wonder why I'm not relaxed. Let's figure this out. My feet are in the stirrups, my knees are in my face, the door is open facing me. And there's always a guy you went to high school with in the waiting room. It never fails, am I right? I thought that was you. Looking good. See, men don't know, because men go to the proctologist. They're flipped over, they're on their stomachs, they fantasize. It's a whole different thing. I'll tell you nothing, Nazi pigs, nothing, nothing. But for a woman to be in those stirrups, is that, is that the worst? And when the, when the gynecologist makes jokes? Gynecologists should not make a joke, am I right? When you're in the stirrups, you want your doctor walking out carrying a pool sweep? My guy does jokes! Do you know what it's like to be in the stirrups and have him make jokes? Dr. Schwartz at your cervix. My guy does jokes! I'm dilated to meet you. He does like jokes. There's Jimmy Hoffa. I mean, it just... I'm just a spreader of all wives' tales. I mean... And there's no way to get back at that son of a bitch unless you learn to throw your voice. Wouldn't that be funny? Hi, Doc. He dropped dead. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> you never have to be examined. How's that lovely wife of yours? <laughs> that or why he's examined, you get him in a head grip. Gotcha now, you son of a bitch. You want to take a look? Take a look. look. <laughs> oh, it's so hard to be feminine. Sometimes... <laughs> Oh, what men think of them. Men like, make men like them young and they're like stewards. That's the, and that's who, that's why you're single, become a nurse or stewardess. They marry rich, rich, rich. What do you do? In what? I work in a hotel. You work for Mattel? In a hotel. Oh, in a hotel. Oh, my. All right. In a hotel. You can meet somebody there. Yeah. But nurses, stewardesses, because they have those little short skirts and they don't wear underwear and the men go crazy. They're always getting men blankets. <gasps> Let me get you another blanket, sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sit by the window, you see the earth. Sit by the aisle, you see the moon. And, oh, please! And let a woman ask a stewardess for help. Yeah, stewardess, where's my seat? Three inches below where it was last year. I asked, so... stewardess, I'm gonna throw up. Open your bag. Stewardess, my husband's cold. He wasn't last night. They, but stewardess do well, and nurses do very, very, very well. They marry rich because they wait for a rich guy in an auction tent. You gonna marry me once your air cut off? I'll marry you, I'll marry you. That's why they wear white. They can go right to the aisle. And it's just, oh, sure. Because you gotta, you got to look good. you got to try to be good. Oh, it's hard to be woman. You know what the worst thing is? Just, just going, oh, well, there are three worst things I would think about, actually. There are three very bad things that I, that I think a woman has to go through. The first, I think, is when you're blowing your nose in public. Because I always think that looks so, oh. And then I have a stupid habit. I look in it like a schmuck. I, like I'm going to see something in there. I'm going to find something. Oh, look at that. I just flew out a ten dollar bill. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> That's number one. The second stupid thing I do is I always, I always, when I take my pantyhose at night, I sniff my pantyhose. It's just. A... <laughs> Don't you do that? What do you think? Camille's going another day. <laughs> and when your dog faints dead away, you go, I guess not. And. The third thing that I do is whenever I go into public bathrooms, I pay for the toilet seat. Because what, oh, what did our mothers teach us? Each and every woman in this room, what were you taught by your mother? When you go into a public bathroom, don't sit down. Better dead, dead, dead. Pay for the toilet seat. I have spent one third of my adult life in some stupid public bathroom going. Paper, 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 paper. Then you turn around fast, all the paper, paper, paper blows off. <laughs> then you get a piece on your heel and you're walking out like an ass. It's like... Or sometimes you squat. Do you ever squat? Everyone's on your squat. That's when it's really icky, pewy, ugh, ugh, ugh. So you put your dress up, your slip up, your pantyhose goes down, your panties go down, you get a hold of the crotch. Okay, here we go, I'm gonna squat. Here we go. Halfway down, your foot touches the foot of the woman in the next booth. It's just... Oh, God. Oh, I didn't show you this. Isn't this great? I found this backstage. It's Elizabeth Taylor's old belt. Isn't that pretty? It's... <laughs> 
Mrs. Larry Fortinsky. Well, she finally found Mr. Wright, 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 Mr. Wright. Oh, God, remember when she was fat, she lost all that weight. I had the best fat jokes, God damn it. If she had stayed fat one more year, I would have had a new house. It just, I had all these great jokes. She had more chins than a Chinese phone book. I had these great jokes. The only woman to stand in front of a microwave oven and go, hurry! I had these great jokes. I took her to McDonald's just to watch her eat and watch the numbers change. I had these great jokes. And then, oh God, she lost weight. I tried to save them, but it's very, very tough. Oh God, there are all kinds of diets that I told you about. It just, it just gets very, very difficult. Do you diet at all? Yeah, well again, you're married, so you can let go a little bit, because it changes. No, it changes when you're single. That's how I can tell you were single. Single women and married women, it's very, even the posture, that's how I spotted you right away. Posture changes. When you're single, you sit better, because you're on sale. Boobs up, smile, song. The minute you're married, the whole body goes like, thank God. It's like the whole thing. That and single girls always talk with their tongue out. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, oh waiter. May I have another Coke? The minute you're married, the tongue goes back in the mouth. It never comes out again as long as you're alive. That and you never scratch. Single women never scratch. They'll say, see the bird? Look at the bird. <laughs> Wasn't that a beautiful bird? The minute you're married, go, is that a pimple on my rear end? Can you check it out, honey? <laughs> Has the rash spread to the other cheek? You can tell me. That and single women never fart. Ne when was the last time you farted? They never fart. They, 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 they can go a year with those little cheeks so goddamn tight together. Not gonna fart, not gonna fart, not gonna fart, not gonna fart. The minute you're married, go, wanna hear a tune? And that is how you tell the difference. I wouldn't be single again. Oh, but I am. I would, when I was single, I was the last girl in Larchmont, New York to get married. My mother had to sign up last girl before freeway. I mean, you have no idea. I would date anything. My mother just said, marry him, marry him. I was living, marry the guy next door. I was living next door to a gay bar. She didn't care. Anything, anything to get married. And then you get married and you're happy. You're not happy. You're happy. Happy is when you first get married. You run around, you play games. Catch me, catch me, catch me, catch me. When you're married, 10, 12 years, you play catch me, catch me, but you walk. Catch me, catch me. Can I catch you tomorrow? Sure, catch you tomorrow. I'll know in advance, I'll take a bath. It's a whole other thing. Do you douche? Do you douche? You don't douche? Do you get in the shower, stand on your head? I, it's a, wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> oh God, I don't know. It's hard, it's hard. That's why I'm glad I don't have my period anymore. Don't you hate your period? Oh, the only woman in the whole world who likes it is a woman named Kathy Rigby who does a commercial. <laughs> happy as hell. Why is I happy with Kathy? Got my period. <laughs> I've got the rag on in time for the Olympics. Yay! I said, that idiot has toxic shock. She? She and the other one, Brenda Vaccaro. I like tampons. <laughs> That's one tough bitch. She rolls her own. Oh, please. Oh. oh, God. Commercial, uh, commercial, they have big tampons here these days. What size do you wear? <laughs> they come super. Do you, wear su do you wear super? I bought a box of super. They're huge. They come one to a box. They are huge. When I put it in, I went in the swimming pool, all the water went whoosh. I'm standing in an empty swimming pool. And everyone's going, what happened to the water? I don't know. Squish, 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 squish. Then you take it out. I had a rainbow between my legs for two and a half years. Oh, God. I'm talking to you so much. I gave her flowers. I should give you something. Yeah. You have nice boobs. You're lucky. Yeah. You are. What size are you? We've got 34, 36. What are you, 38? I have no boobies. I wear, you know, this is all push up, but I, yeah. 38, 40, 40, 40, 48, 48, 40 B, 40 B, 40 C, 40 C, 40 D, 40 D. Oh, you're making a joke. 40 D, God. What size the other one? <laughs> I should give you something. You want, you want flowers? Yellow or white? Yellow, you got it. So yellow, please. It's so nice. Yellow, please. English. Oh, 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 oh. 
I love English. English people speak better than anybody else in the whole world. I was in the beauty shop and I was sitting next to this woman. She goes, fo 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 fo. I said, she's putting me on. How do you do? She goes, fo 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 fo. So it was a joke. I went, well, fo 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 fo. She invited me for the weekend. I mean, it's just. It's amazing. This is for you, my darling. Yeah, you should take two because of your boobs wait right here. Catch. Hold on. Hold on. He's a second for you. Okay. And who else did I talk to? I talked to you here in front, right? Yeah. You with the pantyhose here. This is for you. You want a second, you'll get in a second. Okay. And you with your daughter, I talk to you so much. You know what? You want a tree? Will you take it home? I'll give you a tree. Okay. Here we go. Please, okay, let me just see which one is the one. This one's the Okay. Can you guys help me? I want to give her a tree. Appreciate it. Could you help me a little more, guys? liberation we did this to ourselves you're welcome <laughs> it's yours I I I'm gonna leave you now no no please Off. But I think, <laughs> wouldn't that be funny if you all went, yay! But I think, I think, I think we've all learned something very wise here tonight. I think you've learned what a good person I am. I think you've learned what has made me happy. It's what made you happy. Because if I can come on a stage, and make one person laugh. One person. You could see your faces now. She's putting this on. You know what I need? I need music. I need some really dramatic music. Okay, it's up to you, Ian. If you were American, you'd be Ian. It's up to you, Ian. I want some dramatic music here. Okay, guys, hit it. which makes you think like you like you're Joan Crawford drunk that's a <laughs> but uh, I just want to come out and just say very very fast because even though the show is over um, it's my first time my husband was English okay and this is my first time back in England since my husband's death which was uh, first uh, geez four years already going and I was so nervous and I was so worried I thought God can I perform here again what's it like and you were so nice and so warm and so sweet and I just want to say from the bottom of my heart thank you for being here and thank you for being such a responsive, terrific audience. I love England so much. Thank you. <laughs> God bless you.